Good morning and welcome to the service for Wednesday the 24th of November. It's good to be with you this morning. This is the week before um, Advent and uh, it's the end of the church calendar for us. Our service is taken from the Book of Alternative Service. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. Watch at all times. Pray that you may stand before the Son of Man. This morning we are going to read Canticle 7, The New Jerusalem. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though night still covers the earth, the darkness covers the nations. Over you will the Lord arise. Over you will his glory appear. Nations will stream to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will always be open, day or night. They will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will name your walls salvation and will call your gates praise. No longer will the sun be your light by day, no longer the moon give you light by night. The Lord will be your eternal light, your God will be your glory. This morning our psalm is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who would stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With them there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all of their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2 and reading from verse 1 to 10. Peter writing, Rid therefore yourselves of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 19, verse 23 to 30. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle and for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we have left everything and followed you. 
what then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed him, me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who will first, who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John and Charles Wesley were two of 19 children born to the Reverend Samuel and Susanna Wesley in Epworth, England. Both pursued theological studies in Oxford, England, and joined what was called the Holy Club, in which they covenanted with each other to live disciplined Christian lives given to serious study of the Bible, prayer, fasting, and charitable works. What fellow students derogatively called the Methodists. On the 24th of May in 1738, John Wesley heard Psalm 130 being read before when he went into a meeting of the Moravia, at a Moravian meeting house in Aldersgate Street in London. He wrote in his journal, In the evening I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter off before nine, while he was de describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. Psalm 130 could best be described as the human predicament and its dependence upon divine grace. In these few verses, we move from complete human despair to the joy and confidence of the work of God in resolving the human predic predicament through grace. The st psalm starts with that wonderful description of the human condition and our response to God. Out of the depths I have called to you. In the tradition of the psalms, the depth is shorthand for the image or metaphor of the depths of the sea, that place of deep fear and dread where life overwhelms us and takes the very breath from us. But he places us into a position or posture of prayer, I called to you. The depth is more than simply a state of helplessness where we feel overwhelmed by life. It is also a state of being of our own human making and failing. What is done amiss in the psalm that requires the possibility of a new beginning to be found in and initiated through forgiveness. So in verse 3 it flips from describing the human condition of despair to talking of the human anticipation of faith that God through grace will act to restore or resolve or reignite or reimagine what might be possible. For there is forgiveness with you, writes the psalmist. The psalm then flips back to the human response that anticipates that transformative grace. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watch for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. It carries with it the anticipated imagery of a new day, a new beginning, a new possibility, and the dawning of a new reality through grace. The psalm then shifts from the individual psalmist's response or voice to an exhortation or calling out to the crowd in verse 6 and 7. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. It reminds us that salvation, the work of God to remedy the human condition through grace, is a corporate or communal experience that transforms the community and the world around us. That the kingdom of God is lived out wherever the grace of God is found in human relationships and interactions. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 3, writes, Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which you also have been sa are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. Paul refers to salvation, being saved, in the present continuous tense, to indicate to us that a conversion is not simply an event, but a life journey of continuous reorientation 
and dependence on the grace of God. This is not to suggest to us that our salvation is insecure and up for question, but rather that conversion is an ongoing journey of dealing with our human predicament, continuing to be saved, as we trust in God's gracious dealing with us each and every day. And while we might have those moments in life like John Wesley where we feel strangely warmed by the grace and presence of God, the grace of God is an ongoing reality in our lives that constantly rescues us from the depths of our human predicament and continuously lifts us to the light of God's presence. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hero Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This morning for our intercessions, we're going to use intercession number eight in our prayer book. And the response is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your incarnation and your birth in poverty, by your baptism, your fasting, and your trials in the desert, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. By your agony in the garden, by your cross and your passion, by your death and your burial, by your resurrection and ascension, and by the gift of your Holy Spirit, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. In times of trouble and in times of well-being, at the hour we die, and on the day of your glory. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Deliver us from war and violence, from hardness of heart and from contempt of your love and your promises. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Assist your people in every land. Govern them in peace and justice. Defend them from the enemies of life. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy. Through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two notices. Uh, the first is that we will um, well, there's a couple of notices actually. The first is that we will be restarting our 8.30 service on Sunday mornings, this coming Sunday, the 28th of, no of November, for Advent, Advent 1. And again, please uh, phone the church office um, to indicate that you'll be coming, if that's the service of choice for you. It's a, a said Eucharist, uh, I, there's no music, and uh, it's generally a very quiet and pastoral service. We have an Advent study group uh, started by the Reverend Susan Snelling this um, coming Monday, November the 20, 29th, and it will be via Zoom, um, and it's entitled Almost Christian. There's a study guide for $20, and it runs in the afternoons, the Monday afternoons, via Zoom. Do contact the church office or Susan Snelling uh, for more details. And a reminder that our Advent Christmas daily devotions are going to be via the Church of England and uh, entitled At the Heart of Christmas. And uh, you can contact myself or Amy Pawley for more details. And then uh, there are details of that, um, that study group uh, which will run all the way through Advent and right through the Christmas season um, which you can find in your Christmas letter that we posted out uh, this week. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you now and forevermore. Amen.